Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the 6th module of our hands on machine learning course and this 6th module is all about machine learning models and some important concepts related to it. So in the previous video we have discussed about what is meant by overfitting and uh, what is the cause and uh, how we can prevent overfitting and in this video let's understand what is meant by underfitting in machine learning. So underfitting is an issue that we uh, generally face in machine learning so it is an undesirable thing. So in this video let's try to understand about this and how we can uh, you know rectify this underfitting issue. So before getting started in case you are watching my videos for the first time. Hi in this YouTube channel I am making a hands on machine learning course. And if you want to learn this uh, course from the beginning, I'll give the link of my course playlist in the description of this video. You can check that out. With that being said, let's get started with today's video. So first of all, let's try to understand what is meant by this overfitting. So let's uh, start with a formal definition. Overfitting happens in machine learning when the model does not learn enough from the data. Underfitting occurs when a machine learning model cannot capture the underlying trend of the data. Okay, so the training that the model has on the data set is not enough. So what happens is it cannot find the trends uh, that are present in a particular data set. Okay, so this is the definition of underfitting. So it will make more sense if we understand this with a particular image. So this is how an optimal model uh, looks like and this is how an uh, underfit model looks like. So we have a data points. So the green color points represents the data points. So we have x axis and y axis here. Let's say that uh, x axis represents the number of uh, years in work experience. Let's say that we want to find the uh, salary that a person may get based on their work experience. Okay, so in this case, we take the number of uh, years in the x axis and the salary uh, in the y axis. Okay, and we are trying to plot the data here. So we have plotted the green color data points here and we want to fit a model to it. So this is how an optimal uh, model looks like. It tries to find the trend in it. So in this case, if you see there is an increase in uh, the x value with an increase in the y value for a certain extent. After that, with the increase of x value, the y value decreases. So that is what represented by this particular curve. And uh, this is an optimal model. So this is how an underfitting model looks like. So it does not find that particular uh, trend. So in this case, I have explained you what is the trend. So first uh, the uh, y value increases with increase of x and then it uh, decreases. Whereas this underfitting model cannot find the trend. So it, you know, it uh, in this case, it just fits the data in a, a simple uh, line. So this is a linear regression model. So this is an example of an underfitting problem. So whenever a model cannot find the trend present in the data, so we call call it, it does not uh, learn enough or the model is under trained and this problem is called as underfitting. So how you can find that your model is underfitted? One thing you can do is, uh, if you can check your training data accuracy, if the training data accuracy is very low, then it is a sign that your model is underfitted. Okay, so in the case of overfitting, what happens is you will, you will have a very high training data accuracy, but uh, the accuracy of test data will be very low. Whereas in the case of underfitting, the accuracy on training data itself will be very low. Okay, so this is uh, all meant by underfitting and uh, how you can find underfitting. Okay, so I'll try to explain this with an example. Let's say that we have a set of values. So values of x and values of y and uh, y value depends on the value of x. Okay, so if the value of uh, x is minus 10, then the value of y is 100. If the value of uh, x is minus 9, then the value of y is 81 and so on. Now let's try to plot all these uh, data points in a graph. So this is the plot that we are getting. So if you see here, this represents a parabola, right? So this is a, a parabola curve if you join all the data points. Now let's see what an underfitted model looks like. So this is how an underfitted model looks like. So it tries to fit the data in a line, but it is impossible to fit all these data points in a linear line, right? So you can change the orientation of this line, but uh, you won't get a proper fit. So because this is a parabolic relationship, but the model tries to fit in a, a simple line. So this is how a good fit looks like. So this is the good fit for this particular data point, which is a parabola, right? So this is all about underfitting where a model fails to uh, find the trend present in the data set and it cannot fit all the data points in a curve. Whereas a good fit tries to fit all the data points in a curve and we can find the trend. Here the uh, value first uh, decreases for a certain value of x and the value of uh, y increases with the value of x increases. So compare the value of y and x. So there is a decrease in the value of y with the increase in the value of x. And after this particular point, the value of y increases with the increase in value of x. So this is how a good fit looks like in this particular case. Okay, so this is all about underfitting. So now let's understand what are the things that causes underfitting and how we can rectify this underfitting problem. 
So choosing a wrong model. So in the previous case, we have to uh, choose a parabolic model. If we have chosen a linear model, it cannot fit this particular data, right? So choosing a particular model or a correct model is very important. So if you choose a wrong model, then that is one of the causes for underfitting. Having a less complex uh, model is another uh, example. So when you compare a parabola and a linear model, a linear model is a very simple model, whereas a parabola is a more complex model compared to a parabola. Right, so the complexity of parabola is more when compared to a line. So if you have a very less complex model, then there is a problem of underfitting and less variance and uh, I bias. So in the previous video, I have explained to you about uh, bias variance trade off in a small way. So bias variance trade off is something that tells us to, uh, you know, find the optimum model for a data set. So for that, we need to understand about variance and bias. So bias is nothing but the approximation that a model makes, uh, you know, uh, for a target function. So in machine learning, we have features and we have target and the machine learning model is something that finds the function that relates the features and the target. So feature is nothing but the X value and target is nothing but the Y value. Bias is about that uh, approximation function and variance is uh, how your model changes or how your function changes if you use a different training data, okay? So this is about bias and variance. So if you have a less variance value and high bias value, then you will uh, run into this issue of underfitting. So we cannot go deeper into this particular topic because as I have told you in the previous video, we need a separate video for uh, bias variance and bias variance trade -off. So in that video, I'll explain you uh, in detail about this uh, bias and variance. But for now, just, uh, make a note that uh, underfitting occurs when we have less variance and IE bias. Okay, so these are the causes for underfitting. Now let's see how we can prevent this underfitting issue. First is choosing the correct model appropriate for the problem. So in the example that we have seen, we have a parabolic relationship between the X value and the Y value. So in that case, if we choose a wrong model, such as a linear model, we cannot get a good fit. So choosing a correct model is very important for uh, you know rectifying the underfitting issue increasing the complexity of the model. So as we have seen, if we have a simple model, which is not suitable for a particular data set, so and, uh, then it causes underfitting. So we need to have a more complex model, which can uh, fit the data better. Okay, so the third thing which you can do is have more number of parameter to the model. Okay, so when you increase the parameters to the model, then the complexity of the model uh, increases. So if you think about uh, a line, a line has only two parameters, slope and uh, intercept. So we know that the equation of the line is, is uh, y is equal to mx plus c, where m and c are the parameters. Whereas if you take a polynomial equation, a polynomial equation may look something like this, y is equal to uh, a1x uh, square and uh, b2x2 square and so on. A polynomial curve will be a more complex uh, equation and a parabola will be a more uh, complex equation. So if you increase the parameters of a model, then the complexity of the model also increases. So increasing the parameters is another uh, you know thing which you can do to prevent underfitting. And finally, using bias variance trade-off. So as I told you, bias variance trade-off is very helpful to find the optimum uh, model, which is very suited for a particular uh, data set. So these are the causes and uh, these are the things that we can use to prevent underfitting for a model okay so that's it about underfitting and how you can rectify this issue and i hope you have understood all the concepts covered in this video and that's it for this video and see you i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching